Television Center of... Millions of dollars in damage, and yet no serious injuries in a spate of reported tornado touchdowns last night. Good evening, I'm Mark Williamson. In Cuyahoga Falls, the winds tossed one state road car dealer stock around, around a lot up at Spitzer's, and it left 22 nearby businesses with serious damage. Six businesses were destroyed, and State Road had to be closed for much of the morning to allow for cleanup. Over in Stowe, trees toppled onto homes and garages. The Summit County Red Cross estimates that 125 homes in Summit County were damaged, 90 of those in the Stowe area alone. And yet the storm did not destroy everything. It left one Stowe family with their satellite dish, even if they didn't have any power. Good evening. This is our coverage of the aftermath of the storm that hit last night. And another storm system, as I said, is on the way. We'll get more on that from Tim Doherty in just a few minutes. While the Weather Service hasn't officially confirmed any tornadoes hitting this area last night, enough people are around to bear witness to not only the actual storm itself, but the kind of destruction most experts told us today is certainly consistent with the tornado. Throughout the news, we'll take you to the different areas that were hit the hardest last night. We will go to Suffield, Suffield Township with Pamela Dennis a little bit later on. Phil Hoffman is going to tell us about what happened in Stowe last night, where Eastern Stowe was hit the hardest. And in Cuyahoga Falls, Joanna Porzak is going to tell us about uh, not only the residential damage that was done, but some of the damage done to the businesses there. We have two reports. Last night's storm moved quickly from west to east, ripping a wide path through the city's main manufacturing area. The Bell and Wyoga Lake Industrial Parks on Mark Drive and Remington Road sustained the most storm damage. At least a dozen businesses were hit, including the Spitzer Ford dealership on State Road. Cars were crushed, Mustangs mangled, dozens of vans were dinged and dented. All day long, crews worked to clear the street of poles, siding, and other debris, and reeled in hundreds of yards of knockdown power lines. I'll go fair frame that out, take that top wire up, get it out of the way. Then we'll run your winch out and pull these other ones up. How's that sound? The Marlin Tool Company appeared to be hardest hit of all. We followed along as founder Raymond Beach and his two sons saw for the first time this morning the damage inflicted on their 20-year-old family business. Oh, geez, look, there ain't no place to start here. Raymond Beach says he can't understand why his building made of concrete block collapsed when neighboring buildings with aluminum sides held up. Damages to this business alone could reach $4 million because of the machinery inside. One piece of equipment was worth half a million dollars. While the winds tore apart block and mortar, paper time cards remained securely in their pockets on the wall. The company hopes to hang on to the jobs that go with those time cards. I would rather hire them as laborers to work on it than lay them off to get it going again. Uh, I'll do whatever I can to keep them jobs for them. Throughout much of today, Mark Drive remained blocked by support beams ripped out of the ceiling of the core tape company. Metal rims once stored inside the Ultra Forge Company are now outside, as are materials warehoused at Technicoat. Just before the storm hit the industrial park area, winds tore apart a historical schoolhouse. The Northampton Sutter School was built in 1875 and relocated to Bath Road 10 years ago. For more than 100 years, the old schoolhouse withstood everything Mother Nature had to give. It is perhaps the one storm casualty that cannot ever be replaced. Historical society officials say some antiques inside were salvaged. They say it's doubtful, though, the structure will be recreated. Across the street, members of the Northampton United Methodist Church were cleaning up. Winds ripped off the church's steeple and most of the roof. Pastor Dave Scabuzzo says the crisis has pulled his congregation together. More than anything, I feel like it's just kind of pulling us together, making us even more unified in terms of our mission and what we're about, and realizing that the building is not the church. Cuyahoga Falls officials, faced with millions of dollars in damages, are looking on the bright side, too. 
I've already contacted the governor. We're going to try to get him up here. At uh, very worst, we want to try to apply some immediate aid to get some relief for these business owners. It's just uh, just incredible the damage that uh, can be inflicted on a city in a matter of moments. Most of all, they're thankful no one was hurt. Joanna Porzak, 23 Newsday, Cuyahoga Falls.